Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Emmet shortcuts to save time when you're writing code. Emmet is an extension in VS Code that comes with a ton of shortcuts that you can use to write your code more quickly and easily. We're not going to cover every single shortcut in this video, but I am going to show you the ones that I use most often. Sound good? Let's get into it! Okay, I have VS Code open, so let's jump right into the first shortcut. The first one I wanted to show you is how to add boilerplate HTML into your files. So I have a blank index.html file to start off, and if we type in an exclamation point, we can see the M abbreviation tooltip pop up, it tells you what it's going to put in when we press enter. And when we press enter, it's added in all the tags that you need in pretty much every HTML file. We have the doc type, HTML, head, and body tags, as well as some of the meta tags and title tags that we need in the head. The next shortcut I'm going to show you is probably the one that I use the most often myself, and that is when you're writing tags using Emmet, you don't actually need to type in the angle brackets or even the closing tag. It'll do it all for you. Let's look at an example here. In the head tag, we usually want to load our CSS file using a link tag. So if we only type in the name of the tag, link, and as we start typing, we can see that it immediately will pop up all the different options we can use. So we'll select CSS, hit enter, and voila, Emmet has added the full tag for us. This applies to pretty much any other HTML tag you might want to add. So if we go down into our body, let's say we wanted to add an h1 tag, we type in h1 and hit enter, it's automatically added both the opening and closing tags, and even better, it's placed the cursor between the two, so all we have to do is type in the actual content of our h1 tag. We can do this for, let's say, a section tag, and a div tag, we just type in div, paragraph tag, and an anchor link. If you type in a colon, it'll tell you the different options for the anchor tag. So we want to link one, and it's going to give us the option here, so we just have to fill it in. So in my opinion, being able to type in all the tags without having to type in all the angle brackets and the closing tags is a pretty big time saver, so I definitely use this one all the time. The next one I'm going to show you is how you can add a class or ID value to a tag. So let's go into our HTML and let's just delete what we have here and make some more room. So let's say we wanted to write a section tag that had a class of content. To start off, we would type in section. And before we hit enter, instead, we're going to type in dot content and press enter. And as you know, the dot is the class selector in CSS. So Emmet is kind of using the same language in order to let you add a class. And let's say we wanted to add, instead of a class of content, an ID of content. So again, we'll type in section, and instead of dot, we'll add in the pound or hash and content. And then when we hit enter, it's created the section tag with an ID of content. And to make this shortcut even shorter, when you're creating a div tag that has a class or an ID, you don't even have to type in the word div. Emmet will automatically default to a div if you're creating an element with a class or an ID. So let's say we want to create a div with a class of title. If we simply type in dot, title and hit enter and it creates that div with the proper class for us and let's say we want to create a div that has an id of title instead we type in hash title and hit enter it's created that div that has the right id this is a pretty big time saver when you're writing a lot of html tags now the next shortcut i'm going to show you is how you can create nested tags using the right or greater than angle bracket let's say we want to create a section tag with a div tag nested inside it to do that, we'll type in section, right angle bracket, and then div, and enter. And we've created the div tag nested inside the section tag. And the cool thing about this is that we can also combine this with the class or ID functionality. So let's say we want to create a div with a class of flex parent, and inside that div, we want to create another div with class flex child. Let's see what that would look like. So first we'll type in the flex parent div. So we don't need to type in div since we're adding a class. We'll type in flex dash parent, then right angle bracket, and then dot flex dash child. And if we hit enter, it's created those nested divs with the proper classes. Now, in addition to creating nested or child tags, we can also create sibling tags, meaning tags that are on the same level as one another using the plus sign. So going back to this example we just created, let's say we wanted to create a flex parent div and inside it, we want to create not one, but two divs of class flex child. Let's start over and let's see how we would do that. 
So first we'll start by typing the dot flex parent, and then using the right angle bracket, we'll add our child elements. So we'll add one dot flex child, and then we want to add the second flex child. So we'll add a plus sign dot flex child. Then when we press enter, we can see that it's created the two flex child divs inside the flex parent. And believe it or not, we can actually make writing this markup even more efficient by using a multiplication symbol. So we'll delete this. We're going to create the exact same markup, but instead of having to use the sibling selector, first we'll add our flex parent and then the right angle bracket. And then we want to add the flex child elements and we want two of them. But instead of typing plus flex child, because of the same class, we can actually just multiply it by two. So we'll add the multiplier symbol, which is the star asterisk, and then two, hit enter and it's done. So we can create as many as we want. And you can use this most often when you're writing lists, like unordered lists. So if we have an unordered list, we have a child selector. Then we want to create a bunch of list items. If we just type in li times, let's say five, and then hit enter, it'll create an unordered list with the five child list items. The next shortcut I'm going to show you is how you can add in placeholder lorem ipsum text. Let's delete what we got here. And if we simply type in lorem, L-O-R-E-M, and then we can type in the number of lorem ipsum words we want. So I'm gonna type in 20, hit enter, and it's added 20 words of lorem ipsum text. So obviously we can use any number of words we want. If we wanna type in 100, then it's added 100 words. So what I use this most often with is in tags. Let's say I have a paragraph tag. If I wanna add some lorem ipsum text to that, we we'll use the child selector, type in lorem, and let's just say 10. We hit enter. Now we have our paragraph tag with the lorem ipsum placeholder text. All right, the next shortcut I'm gonna show you is how you can use groupings in parentheses to have a little more control over how your markup is generated. So going back into our paragraph lorem ipsum example, let's say instead of one paragraph, we wanted to create five paragraphs of lorem ipsum text. Now to create one, we already just did that. We'll say P, right angle bracket, and then lorem, and let's just say 20 words. Now, if we wanted to multiply this by five, we know we can use the asterisk for that, but we don't want to just multiply, you know, lorem 20, and that's actually not really going to do anything anyway. What we have to do is use parentheses, add a grouping around the paragraph with lorem ipsum text, and then outside of that, we'll add the asterisk and times five. Now, if we hit enter, we can see that Emmett has generated five paragraphs with the lorem ipsum text that we wanted. All right, this last shortcut that I'm gonna show you is how you can toggle wrapping lines. So if you type in Alt Z, you'll either turn word wrapping on or off. So right now I do have it on. You can see these paragraphs are wrapping. If I hit Alt Z, it will not wrap the paragraph tags and we're going to need to horizontally scroll. And if I hit Alt Z again, it'll go back to wrapping lines. Now the shortcut isn't actually an Emmet shortcut, it's just a VS Code shortcut, but I get asked about it quite a lot in my videos and my live streams, so I figured this would be a good place to put it. And that's it for Emmet shortcuts. I hope this video helped you, and if I forgot your favorite Emmet shortcut, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and keep on coding!